Hello and welcome my friends. I'm still sick, but not sick of this world's event, man. It's getting so hyped. It's just a couple more days, just a couple more hours. And uh, yeah, we're at it. Uh, actually, at the time of recording, one day, 20 hours, 22 minutes, and then pickems are locked. Um, yeah, again, I've been sick. So uh, yeah, recording has been a bit of a hassle. And uh, yeah, let's just get into the pickems. I mean, I think everyone has done them by now, but uh, <laughs> let's have a bit of a conversation here with it. What will be the duration of the longest game at Worlds? Um, in the last couple of Worlds, it was like, I think 46 minutes uh, and uh, it's 10, 11 seconds or something. Uh, yeah, I actually looked that up. Yeah, I know. So this is the safest bet. And if we think about it, Right, lane swaps aren't really happening. Are people incentivized to go for faster games right now with uh, like less scaling champions or should we expect more scaling? Honestly, I think 50 to 54 is not too unheard of, but I think with uh, yeah, how the game goes, I think we just go with what is uh, yeah, what has worked in the last couple of years. Pentakills. So this is at all of worlds. Last year we had three pentacles in play -ins and then zero at the main event. And I think something like that could happen again. Especially if like Smolder stays in the meta, Jinx comes into the meta. I think with three plus we are safe. Pentacles happen not so often, sure. And uh, we don't have like pentacle machines like Ruler at Worlds. But hey, I, I think uh, Jinx Smolder being in the meta will make up for that. Which Drake will be the most killed? This is obviously completely fucking random. Uh, due to the simple fact that hey, the drake spawns are uh, random. Um, obviously, if your drake is the soul, then in theory more drakes will spawn. So you look what soul is the most uh, often. I think that's cloud soul. That means, like for example, one team takes the first two drakes and then sees, sees the soul is cloud. And it's like, ah, uh, we don't want cloud soul. It's not that good. Let's not prioritize it. And then the other team that is like losing gets one drake. And then maybe they get a second drake and then the other team right then it's like uh four drakes have been slain that means like 28 minutes plus in the game at least i know we're in the 30s at that point already yeah whatever so right let's say we're like 30th minute both teams have two drakes it's like yeah the game will spawn more cloud souls and uh, more cloud drakes so uh, i think cloud drake being a drake that's not really liked but something that you want to pick up at some points Right, it's not like Chemtech or like super nerfed Ocean Drake. So I think that's uh, more likely to happen. Right, with Infernal Hextech Mountain, sure, they are more likely to be picked up, right, when they spawn. But that also means that um, there will be less uh, additional spawns, right? Because the team that is stacking the dragons won't give up on them. Uh, we have yapped enough. Uh, it's Cloud Drake. It's Cloud Drake. How many Baron Steels will there be? Okay, so in case you have not noticed, there is someone at Worlds who's called Gumayushi, and that means there will be at least three Baron Steels. Um, and yeah, honestly, three to five, six to eight. I mean, it doesn't happen that often. I should have looked this up, how often it happens. Um, I think six to eight is just too much. Sure, there will be quite a couple of games, right? Just in play-in alone, there will be 10 best of threes is play-ins. So that could be up to 30 games, so 20 to 30 games. Then we have the play-in stage. Uh, then we have the Swiss stage, which also has best of threes. Ay, ay, ay. And then we have the best of five. There is a lot of games to be played at Worlds. So there are a lot of lots of chances. I think six to eight actually might happen. Nah, nah, nah. Three to five. People, people have their macro on point. How many reverse sweeps will be there? Zero. Right? There have been, what is it? I think two or three reverse sweeps total in the history of worlds right throughout all of the 14 years and uh yeah they have been rather recent right i think last year uh psg bottling it against bds in the playing stage qualifier then in 2022 uh drx uh reverse sweeping edg and then in uh what is it 2020 i think it was or 2021 I think 2020 Fnatic getting reverse swept by uh, TES. So these are the only three reverse sweeps in the history of Worlds. Uh, it is very, very unlikely. So I, I actually don't think it's going to happen. It's a, uh, and also it just it's out of the best of five. So it's not 
like the play-in stage one that I counted, right, BDS versus PSG, uh, that wouldn't even count this time. So yeah, it's just, it's so unlikely to happen. Who do we play the most in different roles? So yeah, this is pretty easy. Um, there's just one champion that will be picked up in support, in jungle, and can even be flexed into top lane. So yeah, I think Poppy is a rather safe bet. There are other champions, for example, like the Nasus and the Garen stuff, which I don't think will be as prevalent. Um, but obviously, it's also like mid lane and um, top lane champions. But overall, um, we could go with AD carries like, um, what would be an example? I don't know, Zeri, right? Zeri has been picked in top lane, AD carry and mid lane. Uh, but again, I don't think that's going to be something that we're going to see at Worlds. So I think the safest pick is going to be Poppy because classically or historically, this is a champion that has been flexed around um, yeah, quite successfully. And yeah, it's just it just makes sense, right? It's a good champion right now. It's a very good champion. Yeah, we also have players that play it, right? So we have support players that play it. We have junglers that play it. I think it's just, uh, it's guaranteed to be picked in two different roles. And then you need to find a champion who's, who will be picked in three roles. And I don't think uh, there's something that stands out to be that's going to uh, yeah be just that will be the most picked champion. So picked is here the keyword, right? There are champions that we all think that are pretty good right now. Um, Garen, um, obviously, <laughs> Smolder, um, uh, Zix. It's like the nerf is pretty irrelevant, but you can't lane swap. So does that people uh, does that deter people? The champion still does the same things. Um, so Zix, Jinx, Sundra. If we have Zix, then uh, champions like Vi become uh, more interesting. And then uh, when these champions are in the meta, then their counter picks also are interesting, right? Yeah, then whole that whole like game con uh, continues, right? Then the counters to the counters. But uh, yeah, I think most picked would be a st like a simple blind pick top laner. I think that's the most answer or the most prevalent answer. Uh, I should have looked at like history. Um, Right. Usually, like just, there are also like simple support champions like Alistair Nautilus that could appear in this, or maybe Leona even. Um, but I think the easiest answer is just who is the easiest to blind pick top laner? Because I think top lane carries, especially with the changes, you can't even like you you can't dream of plates in top lane anymore. It's impossible. So yeah, very sad days for Gwen. But I think uh, yeah, one of the most broken champions, the Xanta here, will be the most picked. Because again, like who is a safe, safe blind uh, pick champion? Uh, and that's Kisante, right? You can pick him into anything. Uh, if your top laner is good enough, he can win any matchup. Um, it's just Kisante. Who will be the most banned? So this is uh, what I hinted at earlier. Uh, the champion with yeah the most threat that is being perceived as the best. This is, I have no idea, right? If you look at uh, solo queue, if you look at uh, what the pros are playing, um, I think, where is she? Sundra here. Where is she here? Sundra is absolutely destroying the scene. But will Sundra be the most banned champion? Um, so on one side, Sundra has like a good, a like Sundra is a very solid champion. Sundra synergizes very well with AD junglers and with setup and pick comps. All things that are very popular that people have played for many many years so it's not so, uh, it's not something where they have to readjust their playstyle this is something they pick up and it just works for the team and uh, yeah players are confident happy and all of that so Sundra is a very like if Sundra is meta people love picking it uh, obviously not Chovi or Zeka who have yet to win a game in their career with the champion so if uh, Zeka and <laughs> Chovi make it all the way uh, then the champion obviously will drop down in priority. I think they can play the champion, but obviously in their career it has not worked out. So that's just how it is, right? But on the other side, there's Faker who has a Syndra skin. There is Showmaker, who is really fucking good at Syndra. There's Isn't Knight also really good at Syndra? So there are some people who are really good at the champion. So if she's really good, or people assume she's good, and these people are on the opposite squad, you're going to ban Sundra. So Sundra, I think, is a safe pick. But then there are also champions that are maybe a bit overpowered. Smolder, uh, 
Jinx with the attack speed buff. Obviously, that's not going to sh uh, be so visible in uh, solo queue because Jinx obviously is a very team reliant uh, carry in, in that regard, right? She needs time. She's an AD carry in solo queue. Uh, like Smolder's overpowered as hell, but in solo queue, he probably doesn't even have 50% uh, win rate or maybe even not even 45% win rate, right? So Smolder was like growing in ban rate in the LCK. Um, like in the regional split and so on and so on, people just realize that this champion uh, just warps the games. So people may want to be safe and not pick Smolder up, but also Smolder matchup if he's like not in mid lane anymore and he's in bot against, I don't know, long range hyper carries or others, uh, yeah, make uh, be able to bully him a bit more. So I don't think people will respect Smolder as much, and I think it's just going to be a very easy Sundra. Will have the most deaths uh, at worlds right very easy um means which support champion will be the most picked um and i think um well there are arguments again for the like the classic ones like nautilus uh, or alistar also you could go with uh, kisante or jarvan who i think would also be uh meta right with the little buff he got um right because i think if kisante is going to be the most played then does he also have the most deaths? I think there there is an argument to that. But um, what about like I think Alistar is going to be to be that because I think uh, people just like playing Alistar blind pick support. He's also a decent like peel option um, when we actually get into like a Jinx meta or something like that. So I'm a bit torn here between Alistar and Cassante because Cassante is going to be the most play champion. That means he also has the most uh, deaths. But what if I'm wrong about Cassante being the most picked champion, right? Do I want to diversify my picks or do I want to uh, double down on something? I think I'm just going to uh, diversify and pick Alistar here. Logically, it should be Cassante, but if my logic on Cassante is wrong, then uh, yeah, we're going to lose too many points, you know? We'll have the highest win rate and uh, yeah, I thought about this as well. Um, highest win rate in five games so it's going to be a pick that is going to be a counter pick an r5 or something like that right something that you slap down um like as a like as a very situational counter so this could be something like um where is it echo right because echo is a great matchup against syndra not really in the mid lane but uh yeah out of lane echo or fizz are non syndra counters and uh, yeah, if Syndra is going to be very prevalent in the meta, and uh, maybe there's a team that doesn't ban Syndra, they give Syndra over to the opponent on like B1, and they draft uh, some uh, engaged champions that uh, like want to hurt Syndra, and then they round it up with like an assassin uh, mid lane, right? Echo of it. That could be it. Alternatively, something. Where is it? Mordekaiser, right? Um, not many people play him, but Mordekaiser versus Cassante is obviously a, a pretty good matchup. Also, Mordekaiser with his ult is going to send the Fed Jinx, the Fed Smolder, to Brazil, and then he's just going to stopwatch, and hopefully his team can win the fight uh, 4v4. So that would be my pick here, the Mordekaiser, due to the simple reason that I just mentioned. Right, he has the option to be used against like these hyper carries. And the other thing is obviously the good matchup against Cassante. And then not many people play him, so the win rate shouldn't be uh, diluted by like lower level teams. But who would play the most champions at Worlds? <laughs> I mean, um, I did some research in regards to champions. Um, last year, oh my, there we have a lot of players here. Um, I think it should be uh, Reckless, right? Obviously, he's going to play so many games and he is known for a very diverse champion pool. Uh, yeah, obviously uh, kidding. But with T1, we are very close. We're going to talk about T1 and uh, champion diversity in a hot second, I assume. Yeah, last year it was Guma. He played all the AD carries at the, what is it, EWC or whatever, like the uh, Esports World Championship. He also played the most champions. He played... Uh, like a different AD carry in every single game. I don't think he is going to do that at Worlds. And yeah, if we look at it, uh, the one with the most diverse champions, like as a whole from the like big teams, right? Because first of all, to play different champions or like 
many different champions, you need to play many games, right? If you only play five games, you can only play five champions. So we need to talk about teams that are going to make it far. That means no Western team. That means uh, just the eight uh, Asian teams, right? That means T1 Genji, DK, Hunger Life, BLG, Weibo, TES, and LNG. LNG, a bit of a question mark, right? Is it Yegao? Is it Scout in the mid lane? But regardless, these are the eight teams that we put into consideration. And then who from these eight teams, right? Who out of these 40 players has the biggest champion pool or plays the most champions? And uh, well, it is close between Carrier and Zeus. So is it going to be Zeus? Is it going to be Carrier? That is the big question. Zeus played two more champions, right? 24 different champions and Carrier played 22 different champions in, what was it, Summer Split? I think that's where I looked at. Historically, both uh, are known for counter picks and they're going to pick wild champions, especially in the bot lane or in the top lane as counters. I think the bot lane meta is going to be a bit more diverse with potentially enchanter supports to like support, buff up the hyper carries and in top lane, like how relevant is top lane meta right now? I don't think top lane is in a great spot. Um, and I think like sure Zeus is going to, like he's a carry player, he's going to pick his like counter picks on R3 or something like that. And like he's going to look for something um, there, but how relevant is that? I think carrier should be the safer choice, but there's also the small argument that when the pressure is high, carrier is actually someone who's going back to, and defaulting to standard, right? He is blooming if there's no pressure, but, and uh, yeah, we've seen it again and again that like, he just goes to some safer picks in R5s and so on and so on. Regardless, I'm just going to go for carrier. I trust my man. So who will get the most kills in a single game at Worlds? There are two ways we can go about this. First, in the play-in stage, maybe there's an AD carry, it's always AD carries by the way, who is going to absolutely like smurf on all of them. And the easiest option is Betty. Betty is fucking good and his team is by far the best in the play-in stage. So maybe they're going to murder some kids and he's going to end up with 30 kills or something. The next option or the next place where kill records could be broken is the first, one of the first or one of the earlier matches in the uh, Swiss stage, right? Where maybe a tier one team like uh, HLE, BLG uh, plays against a weaker team. So that means uh, Viper or Elk could be one of these, right? Because they demolished uh, like a low, lower level team uh, very, very hard. But are these players really the ones that are going to break kill records? Elk is pretty good, but I mean, he has some greedy motherfuckers on his team. They they like, is Knight going to let his AD carry get the kill record? Nah, nah. And the same could be said for uh, HLE. I think uh, like if they are going to play against a lower level team, I think it's not even getting to that stage. I think Zekka is going to have too many kills before Viper can even you know, like do anything crazy. And then there's obviously Genji. Genji, they can even get kill records against like other teams, better teams, because this team is absolutely crazy and they love funneling all the kills into pace. So I think with Betty, Elk and Viper being like really good options, I think the safest bet and the very boring pick is going to be pace. And uh, I hate doing this because it's so boring. I would love to put Betty here. Um, but uh, yeah, let's just put pace, right? I think it's the safest choice uh, because like Genji, if they play against like any Western team, uh, this is going to be a custom game for them. They are going to like farm kills more than minions, we have to assume. So unless we assume Genji is also going to choke, which I, th I think is going to happen, of course, but uh, okay. let's not jinx it or reverse jinx it, whatever. Right. Highest KDI at Worlds. Um, yeah, it's going to be like one of the KDA players. Um, here, it, it, we need to be careful. Um, it does not say like many games being played. So if you lose in play-ins, but have like a good KDA, that could uh, help, right? Or if your team doesn't get far, but you always have a good KDA, like aiming, for example, um, that could be something. So. 
it's aiming, it's Betty, it's uh, pace. I think uh, again, 80 carries. Yeah, honestly, uh, there could be like any fucking play in uh, 80 carry that uh, yeah, just chills. And uh, even if they don't make it far, they don't play that many games. So not too many chances to actually like lose this KDA. Uh, but yeah, the easiest choice again should be uh, Mr. Uh, KDA here, Mr. Pace. And uh, yeah, it's just. You, you look at the strongest team, you look at their AD carry and uh, yeah, obviously he's going to get kill records when he already gotten them, always. Uh, obviously he's going to have high KDA. Uh, I mean, I could also, I mean, I don't think Genji is going to win worlds. Obviously T1 is going to win worlds, right? So if you don't win worlds, do you have the highest KDA? Uh, I don't know. We'll have the most first bloods at worlds, so that's very easy. You look at uh, all the regions who has the highest uh, first blood rate. And uh, yeah, there's just one nut who's going to have that. And uh, yeah, I trust Peanut to continue his high first blood uh, performances at Worlds. Very easy. We'll have at least one pentakill at Worlds. Like at least one. So yeah, this is pretty hard because like Jinx is meta. So I take Guma here. But T1 is not going to get this man uh, pentakills, like they aren't going to steal shit from him. So pace again would be a good answer for this, but I'm going for a different one here. Uh, again we have the question, is it going to be someone in this, like Swiss stage? Or is it going to be something in the plane stage? And I think plane stage here would be one way to look at this. And where's my man Betty? Betty, 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 oh man, why is it not alphabetically sorted? Yeah, I think Betty is a great pick for this as well. But again, is this team going to let him get pentacles when fucking Yunja and Maple are going to terror people and you assholes? Uh, hard to imagine, hard to imagine. Betty is a good pick for this. Another good pick for this would also be aiming because he's the Mr. DK. Sure, Shomeka, if Sundra meta rolls around and he actually gets to pick Sundra, uh, and like even other mages that could become uh, relevant right now are yeah, aligning with Showmaker's champion pool. Maybe he could steal some of the kills from Aiming, but I think Aiming is the one who carried DK here. Uh, if DK gets anything done, it's on Aiming. And let's go with Betty at least once here, uh, play in stage farming and so on and so on. Again, I think Betty could be uh, up here with like these stats. Again, he has currently the highest KDA in the world, and relevant players right um or out of relevant leagues whatever you want to call it and obviously he uh yeah plays and play in so getting kill records is also uh yeah on his uh, on his radar now lastly coming to the teams which team from a region with two seats or less will advance further this just means which out of the wildcard regions makes it furthest and easiest psg is by far the best they're better than, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm too, I'm so hot on PSG every year and they perform and then they get even better. But uh, yeah, so far, I mean, hey, I think they would roll the entire NA region, but I mean, they could probably even like do good jobs against uh, EU, but uh, yeah, whatever. Which team will win the shortest game duration? Yep, it's going to be one. I mean, hey, it's like, there's no one, shut up. Uh, like T1 is known to be the speedrun uh, monster, right? Which team will have the most Baron steals at Worlds? Uh, which team does uh, Guma play for? Yep, it's going to be T1. Which team will win Worlds? It's going to be T1. Which team will play the most different champions at Worlds? It's going to be T1. Um, yeah, very easy. Why? So T1 has like always the shortest games, it feels like. Uh, yeah, if they play against in a Western team, you know, you gotta be there because if you're going to be like five minutes late, you might already miss the first Nexus going down. Um, Baron steals again, it's T1, just look at last year's, sure. They have made some changes so that Jinx Rocket can't steal it as often. And they've made changes to Varus as well. Not monster damage, but obviously Q damage here and there. So they try to stop Guma from stealing objectives, but just look at the, uh, what is it? the uh, regionals, right? Guma already steals dragons and all of that stuff. He is just going to do it. Uh, obviously T1 is going to win worlds. Have you not looked at the narrative? 
the fifth trophy is for Reckless. So uh, yeah, that's that. And which team will play in the most different champions at Worlds is something I mentioned all the way over here. Let's talk about different champions. So um, yeah, let's let's look at <clears throat> let's look at the LPL, right? Again, to play different champions, you need to play different games. So any Western team or wildcard team are automatically out of the window because if you only play five games at Worlds, you can only play five champions. Then that's just not enough. We could look at last year's statistics, but the meta has changed. So let's just look at summer, right? So in summer, BLG as a team played 50 different champions. Weibo played 63 and Weibo was, uh, I think, the, uh, played the most different champions last year. So that is on theme for them. They played 63 champions. So that's like quite a bit more. TES played 51 champions. So just one more than BLG. LNG played 60 different champions, right? We can even say on average that is uh, 56 different champions for the Chinese team. Um, yeah, that might sound like a lot. Let's talk about the LCK. Let's start not with T1. Let's talk about the other three first. Gen G, 65 different champions. So that's already more than everyone. DK, also 65 different champions. And HLE, 64. So, yeah, the LPL plays uh, 56 on average, and these three, three LCK teams play on average 64.67, right? Um, yeah, that is already eight more on average, right? And then let's talk about T1. So their top laner has 24 different picks, Deus, right? Owner has 17 different champions. Faker, right? We all know champion pool issues right now. Not too good, right? If my hands hurt, I also might just play one champion. Only 13. Guma with 16 and Kara with 22. Now let's do some quick math. That is 92 different champions for our lovely team. Yeah, I think T1 here is the, the easiest pick. By the way, the LCK average goes up from 64 to 71 uh, with T1 included. So I think... With these numbers, I established that uh, T1 will play the most different champions. The only counter argument you can make is that uh, T1 under pressure is not going to like pick diverse champions. That is an issue, right? They all default to uh, default um, when the pressure hits high, right? So that's a valid argument. The next one is if you say, or oh, T1 is not going to make a deep run, which is also very fraudulent if you understand how League of Legends works. T1 makes semis at least, right? They're going to at least make semis. And if they're versus an LPL team, they make worlds at least. And if they're in against an LPL team at worlds finals, they're going to win worlds. And yeah, with like these being the rules of League of Legends, I think uh, all of these are very uh, reasonable choices. Again, the only things here where I'm not too happy with is going to be all of these three here, where it's like aiming, pace, Betty, and potentially even elk uh, are all reasonable choices here for these uh, categories, right? So hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and we we'll see each other soon. Bye bye, my friends.